It do be raining. Hello. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? Back on the channel tonight. Uh, we got Tony behind the camera, we got Robbie, we got me, I'm Quinn. It's a 5.3 liter LS and uh, can make it have about 800 horsepower. How to? How to. Now today we're getting it torn down. Uh, get it torn down to the block so I can get it shipped off to a machine shop. So just follow along with us. All right, point of attack. So I'm talking about GMLS motors. They're push rod engines, right? So you have to get all these off in order to even just get to the cylinder head. But first, we got a lot of stuff to do. We've got headers on both sides. Spark plugs are still in their holes. We got a full front drive assembly. You have your water pump, either pulleys, and crank pulley. So uh, these are all the tools we're gonna have. Uh, basic socket set. You got wrenches over there. Dead bull hammer to knock stuff loose. Baggies. Label all your stuff. Went out and got a gear puller. So you're gonna need to get that uh, front pulley off somehow. Stuff good breaker bar. 20 bucks, Harbor Freight. Do you have the old breaker bar that we used to use? Dude, anyway? I have no clue where that thing went. <laughs> it was literally a steel beam. Uh, oh, that was mine. Yeah, yeah is that, that nice. your house? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Let me get this off. Whatever, we'll figure it out later. <laughs> so, so it looks like what we're gonna be doing first is headers and yep. that's it. Get all your outside stuff off. Yep. And then you start working on the interior. All right, take off headers. If you've done any exhaust work, it's just like all that stuff. You have four bolts up top, four bolts on the bottom, uh, both sides. Uh, it's a 13 mil for GM LSs. And yeah, just gotta loosen them and pop them off. It, it's header work, it's easy. Cool, let's get it. Let's see it. Oh, that's actually coming out pretty easy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Man just Great. completely no. decimated his finger. <laughs> Oh jeez. Don't do that, viewers, <laughs> folks at home. Make sure you have a firm grip. Did you just break them loose with that and get the electric and zip them off? Yeah. Works smarter, not harder. Yeah. So it looks like there's just, what is it? Two, four, six, yeah, so eight bolts just horizontally all laid out that you just have to take off and then the header should pop right off, including the gas. Dude, look how easy GM makes this. They literally tell you where the ground is gonna go on your accessory drive. But when tackling accessory drives, start from the furthest out and work in. So I see we've got power steering here, the alternator is here. This bracket is in front of this, so I'm starting with this. Super simple. And what does this go to? This is your power steering. You can tell because the reservoir is right here. Then this is where your alternator would be. This motor didn't have an alternator, so we pulled it from the scrapyard. <laughs> so this stand makes everything easier. Oh, hello there. Jeez, watch out for that. Yeah. So that completely just that swivels just came down. Off the Leaking steering power. Oh, no, 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 no. This is what I got the freaking cardboard for. <laughs> we forgot to put the cardboard in. This book, GM LS Series Engines, basically oh, wow. is a $20 book that we bought from Harbor Freight and it has every single small detail that is necessary to rebuilding uh, LS motor. So yeah, make sure you check out your local car store and they should be carrying these. Fudge muffin, we gotta that do That is it. heavy. heavy. Yeah. Heavy ass kids. You gotta run 10 minutes. Those are sharp, FYI. Yeah, they're like stacked. Make sure you use one of these pneumatic tools, by the way, too, because they will save you a hassle when it comes to wrenching. Yeah, it's like 130 bucks, definitely well worth it. Yeah. But uh, keep all your parts, never know what you can use. Never know when you're gonna reuse these. We're starting to see the face of the block behind all the components that drive, let's say, like your coolant lines along with your steering rack. Ooh. Hold that. There you go. Now yeah, that oil, di oil dipstick's getting in the way. Bullet. Ow. Better, off. <laughs> Boom. Nice. Uh, drop in the box. By the way, if you're wondering why this is exposed, that is because when we were pulling the motor out, it did not come with valve covers. So basically the rocker arms and springs and the rods themselves are exposed to the outdoor elements. But it's fine because we're anyways gonna rebuild this motor entirely. So Quinn, what are your plans with this motor? So if you know anything about GM, you know there's five three iron blocks take a lot of boost. Summit Racing has all the parts you're ever gonna need. Forged rotating assembly, thousand bucks. Can hold 1200 horsepower. The cranks can hold 900. Blocks can hold way over a thousand. Simply, all you need to do, turbo camshaft in there to let you spool quickly. Roller rockers, these like to go bad. Upgrade that. And you can get about 800, 900, even a thousand horsepower if you have the right singer. It's pretty simple, actually. These motors are dead simple. 
run right through them. Get them anywhere. This was two hundred forty-three dollars at a junkyard. It's actually in really good condition. Which is yeah, good. I know. I've noticed that. I've looked in all the valves on that exhaust side. You got the header off, and they're all clean. Not many carbon deposits. I would. I don't know how many miles the motor has on it. I'd reckon not much over two hundred thousand. So this is what's called a Garden Variety 5.3. It's part of the Gen 3 LS motors. You can tell they're Gen 3. These are what are called cathedral ports right here. It looks like the top of a cathedral. The Gen 4s don't have the same ports. And Gen 3s have their knock sensors within the valleys as opposed to on the sides of the motors. Just cool. Simple stuff, let you know what you got. Oh boy. Importance of cardboard. Oh yeah. Yes. Make sure you cardboard it up. Quinn is almost done taking off the water pump. Almost. So many bowls. Yeah. There's like three right there, three right there. All right, here's a good thing to look at to know you've had a water pump done before. So when GM builds their blocks, these bolt holes will go right into the water passages. So you see how this has RTV on it. That means this water pump has been done before because that wasn't done from the factory. That's an aftermarket thing. Cool. People start doing that at shops. Tony, you almost got the header off? Nope, last bolt right now. This is about to fall out. Ow, ow. Heavy? Yeah. I just cut up my finger. I think. Yeah, they're they're heavy. Yeah, these gaskets, be wary when you're taking them off. They are literally like a razor blade. That's pretty much common sense if you work on cars. For, everything yeah. in the bin. Everything in the bin. Everything in the bin. That right there, bolts too. Cool. Or are you bagging them in the bolts? Uh, bag bolts, yeah. I'm Good. probably gonna get new ones, but bag them anyway. Last bolt. Water pumps off. Pops right off. Dude, there's like no corrosion in this. This thing's nice. Awesome. Oh. Ah. <laughs> there you go. Find water because, hey, you need water. <laughs> and label your bolts. Even though I'm probably gonna get ARPs. Now the crank pulley is gonna be interesting. This is where you're gonna need your gear puller, right? Uh, yeah. All right. I'll take it from somebody that's built cars. Label everything. Label everything. Even if you're not gonna reuse it. Like I'm probably gonna get ARP ones of these. Label them. Just in case you need extra, grab yourself a dollar of 500 baggies, Sharpie. Label them, please. It'll save you a bunch of headache in the future. <laughs> Unlike my RX-7, where I just threw everything in a tub and... We don't talk about that. We don't talk about that. <laughs> now the front face of the LS block is completely bare, other than the crank pulley. And once that's off, then we move on to the heads, right? Yeah, let's get this crank pulley. Let's get it. Let's go ahead and break it loose. Right. Well, to get this off, someone's gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have to put something on the this. Do I have a flywheel? A flex plate, same thing. Couldn't you just put a wrench right here, and as it rotates, it'll just jam up in there? I was thinking. What's a wrench I'm never gonna use? <laughs> <laughs> the Aldi brand wrench is. That doesn't happen. Here. There you go. Yeah, I won't snap. All right, ready? This is not a good idea. <laughs> it'll work perfectly. Oh wow, you're fine. It's just gonna take a lot of pressure. Oh, it's coming, it's coming. Nice. All right, that wasn't too bad. We'll probably have to put this back in so we can rotate the crank when it's upside down. Yeah. At least you got the pulley off though. Yeah. That is gonna be heavy by the way. This? For some reason those are always heavy. Like the one on my Honda, heavy. Yeah, that, that, you can save a lot of horsepower if you go to like a fluid damper or something. Oh, that is on there too. All right, so now we're just gonna work on the motor mounts. Uh, these should be pretty simple. They're just four bolts, uh, two right here, two on the back side. Uh, it's a 15 mil, and yeah, just gotta crank them loose. It's holding that way easier than I thought it was gonna be. It's kind of scary <laughs> when you think about it. That's holding your motor in. That is holding your motor to the chassis. Uh, okay, Quinn's over here getting the jaws of life ready for to pull the crank out. Yeah, I'm gonna have to crank pull out. Have to bring him in this one. These things are not fully really used. You could honestly just twist them off with your fingers if you want. <laughs> like it's surprising how loose they are on there. But slightly sketchy. Look. Yes. I mean, granted, you have the weight of the motor sitting on them too. It's not like they're gonna. Sure, yeah. Yeah, they're I not mean, very tight. They're not supposed to be. This iron block is heavy AF too. It's already gotten lighter. Yeah, so we started at what? What is it, 800 pounds ish? Yes, I think the blocks alone were like 100. They're, they're hefty motors. Probably taking 
what, 50 pounds off with the headers and the water yeah. pump and the pulleys. That water pump was heavy. The power mm -hmm. steering was heavy. I didn't expect it to be like 15 pounds. Yeah, I'm just setting up your puller. So Rob just finished up pulling out all the bolts for this last motor mount on the driver's side and just comes right out. Perfect. Nice. How heavy is it? All right, Robbie, can I get y'all, can I get both y'all's help in for this? Yeah, it's gotta hold the teeth in place like that. No, it's pulling these out, but it's on and it's locked in. That's good. Now I just gotta, I'm gonna retighten these. That's unfortunate. Sadness. Well, maybe, maybe now you can just bang it out. You want to try? Possibly. Yeah, I mean, it looks it, like it's coming yeah. loose. It's, it's come out a little bit more. Just bang it out. Watch out, Quinn. Watch your hand. I almost destroyed <laughs> my <laughs> Let's not do that. Nice. It's coming a little bit. These crank pulleys are always pressed on there pretty tightly. So I want to brace back, back this yeah, off. I got you, so I got you. Let's see if I can whack it with the camera. Well, I mean, I guess that's hard. Just, you need to tighten these down a lot more. It's not going to matter. So much force being pulled, it's going to bend it no matter what. Yeah. What I need to do. It's looking like it's coming off a little more, though, because there is a good bit of gap yeah. right in there. I'm going to switch it around to the short end. How would you get a crank pulley off? Hit it with a flip Dude, and shovel. Is. So th there's definitely more room in that little space and then when we started. But our little gear grabber thingy did not do its job, partially because we couldn't get it to work. But regardless, yeah. Um, we've been at this for a solid 30 minutes now. Yeah. This little beauty right here, the crank pulley type thing, is being an absolute bear to get off. So we tried for a solid hour with zero headway. Um, so now we're just gonna move on to tearing the rest of the motor down and hoping for the best. Let's give Tony one more, one more look. My hammer. It's just fine. not breaking. We need, heat. we need that heat. All right, moving on to the rest of the tear down. We're gonna start getting uh, this cover plate off and then we're we doing the heads. Yeah, we're getting everything, then everything we can. So Quinn and Robbie are currently removing the valley, the valley of the V. Yep. This crank, dude, look how close it is. It's right there, but it just, we need heat. We need heat. Can't be tight if it's liquid. Probably some sort of. Oh, uh, you're gonna have to pry it off. Pry bar, pry bar. Watch this give us a pain just like this. At least you know that the motor's built really, 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 really well. I got it, I got it. Uh, Good little yeah. gasket. Gotta, yeah, you gotta, gotta, watch out, watch out. We might have to pull the knock sensors out first. Oop. Nope, yeah, okay. Those are where the knock sensor sits? Yep, right in the center. Dang. Makes sense, but. Something's still attached. If those go bad, that's gonna be a pain to yeah, get. Right. Hello! Oh, <laughs> Jeez. Are you good? Yeah, we good. Oh, there's the relic cover. Hit that. Cool. Camshaft is smooth. So that's where the camshaft sits, right there, and then right beneath that is the crankshaft. So, what size are you thinking these are? Find out. Good 55. 55. Camshaft. So we don't have the necessary size to remove these knock sensors. We don't know what size they are. <laughs> yeah, the every socket. So okay. safety third, channel locks. I'm just gonna strip that so hard. Yeah, we have to. It's on there. It's on there pretty good. I'm gonna bang 13-16 song with a hammer. <laughs> it might just not be finished with old. Could be true. It's on there. Don't like your socket size? Just use a hammer. Oh, no. Hold <laughs> on, I need new knock sensors. <laughs> this is why we need a welder. We can just weld. <laughs> we can just weld a socket on. on. Dude. That is insane. What size? Ah, I think it's a 22. Let's reference the book. 
We're getting tired, just brute force it. You want an extension or? Yeah, I need a half inch extension. No, it's not moving. Something moves. You gonna lose it? Uh, yeah. You can get that on. I'm gonna hammer it back into place. I genuinely, if you were to put a 22 on there, it would fit fine. Because it's like. I don't have a 22 wrench. Once again, that's unfortunate. Jeez, man. Why did it? Oh, there we go. So, yeah, it did. <laughs> it literally fell in my crankshaft. Oh, no. Nope. Yeah. Dang, those, those knock sensors have seen better days. Oh, wow. That, that shouldn't be spinning like that. Well, it's been a hard knock life for them. I hate you. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Interesting. I wonder, so does it sense it via vibration? It's, yeah, it literally senses when the engine explodes. We're well, not like when the engine explodes. Yeah. Dang, I'm that's- hurt. I'm gonna get hurt. Oh. It's right there. <laughs> it's like, I'm gonna get hurt. And that's how you break a ratchet. <laughs> Nice. Every five miles. We can get it. We have to get this off before I get the cam out. We have to go get a butane torch and just straight up heat it up. I feel like maybe you should have put a ring on it. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> We're gonna go to an actual automotive store and get a gear puller for this. Let's do Let's it. Get a GM gear puller. Yeah. Well, they have one for. Can cords. you? I think try to return this one and just say it didn't work. Well, I have to drive all the way back down to Harbor Freight. Yeah, yeah that's true. So we're gonna head to the store quickly and go pick up a proper gear puller because the one that we got from Harbor Freight is a bit too bulky and clunky. And apparently we were doing it wrong because in order to pull this, uh, in order to pull off the, uh, the pulley itself, we were gripping it on by the edges, but actually if you look down here, there's notches. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, come on, you can see that. There it is. There's some notches right there behind the pulley itself. And there's three notches for three arms. So that's how you properly pull it out. So yeah, we'll go get that and we'll be right back. So we just came from a quick pit stop to AutoZone and we picked up a proper puller this time. Hopefully. Pulley puller. Pulley puller. Pulley puller. This one's a lot smaller and a lot more simple. And this one looks like it's gonna be actually gripping on to, to the back of those notches. To grip on, which I pointed out like yes. three hours hey, I ago. I said you were right. That's true. It gets like stuck at a point. I mean, I'm surprised how much we got done though with, with, with just rudimentary tools, <laughs> Do I have to use barbaric techniques. Bolt. Yeah. Look it. Oh, look at that. Fits like a glove. I'm on. You're. On, I'm on on the front. Oh. Oh. It's oh my work. gosh. No. Is it? I have to use the bolt. I'm just gonna go all the way in. It didn't feel like it was that much further off. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> what are these for? These rods. Are you supposed know. to use those rods? You maybe feed it in. <gasps> yeah, yeah, pass me one of the rods. Yeah, I'll give you the longest one because screw it. Uh, I'm gonna use the shorter one. Okay. So you didn't have that one with it. Yeah, it's, okay. it's magical. Magic rods. Okay, so now we're switching over to socket. Okay, there it goes. Right, I'm just gonna back Socket tactics. Because uh, the rods were still too short for this, so luckily for us, right here. If I can get in there. This right, socket's gonna sit right on that plate right there. Alrighty. Basically socket. putting pressure on. Socket. Socket. The screw. Socket me. So we're gonna use use this same method, but we're gonna use a longer socket. The socket's hot. Yeah, it's from all that torque that's going through it. All that all that friction. friction. <laughs> get the socket in there we go. So now we are Putting a longer socket on because the other socket was too short for yeah, the bolt to be able to feed all the way through. So. My knees hate me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They this keep going until it runs out. And then... Oh yes! 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 That deserves high fives that all it, around. Yes. Yeah. Most definitely, dude. Look at that. that that's, so that's awesome. what it's sealed up in there. That's still a good surface, though. Okay. So you didn't mess up. The, we didn't mess up the crank at all, then. Let's go return this so I can get my eighty freaking dollars back. <laughs> nice. And Let's go. go. Woo! So we got to remove all the rocker arms from there. Pull the uh, push rods out. 
The lifter is in a tray with one bolt in there. Lift the tray comes out, then we can pull the cam. All right, um, what is this, eight mil? Break them loose. There's no specific order to these. <clears throat> when you put them on, there is, but when you're taking them off, just take them off. And these are the rocker arms, right? Yes, these are the rocker arms. Common failure point on these because they have a, what's called a Trunin bearing, I believe it's made out of graphite in here. That will start to wear, especially at high RPMs. Luckily, this is a truck motor. Truck motors don't see high RPMs that much. Yeah. Are you but when you go to high performance, you can get a roller rocker set, deletes that. It's just bulletproofing the motor. Is yeah. it bulletproofing? Is it technically bulletproofing? Bulletproofing, yeah. yeah. You're take, taking out any failure point. Mm. Also, another thing, you've got four corners here. They like to build up heat. So what GM does is they run it across. There's a little crossover pipe to balance out the heat. You get a four corner steam kit that connects all these together and runs back to your radiator. Nice. To cool it all off. I was gonna say, someone told me that the only method of, or the only way you can bulletproof a car is if it's a diesel. Like bulletproofing is a diesel Dude, thing. Dude, you can make this thing bulletproof. Go get an iron, or go get a forged block from Summit Racing. These are in good shape. Oh my. Very minimal wear on there. Check the push rods. This is this is a clean motor so far. That's a There's small no push rod. Wear I thought the there. rod would be like twice the size. No, it is wow. are, like I said, these are tiny motors. Jeez, <laughs> are you good? <laughs> Men struggling. Yeah, Men struggling. Um, put these in. A I want. Hold on. I want to get a crack at just one, just to okay. see the tension Wait, behind. Wait, yo, yo, we gotta label these when you get them off. This is cylinder one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. Put the push rod and this in a bag and label it like whatever number cylinder came okay, out. We'll okay. do the same with the lifters. Oh, that, that one's on there, come on. Yeah, that one's on there. Holy cow, oh, okay, there we go. There we go. This isn't, like, look at how clean this is. I'm just a weak link. <laughs> We're okay. <laughs> look at that, look how that just comes out, dude. It's so satisfying to take yeah, these I'd off. I'd leave the bolt in right now. Let's yeah, just take them all off. So next step behind this is basically just, you want to bag each and every spring, label rocker, it. arm, and also a rod, yeah, and if label it. You're gonna reuse them, definitely do it. I'm not, but I'd like to reference them to see what kind of wear is on each one. Yes, for future. Two. Ah, uh, this is so hard with one hand. Two, that's a two. <laughs> that's a two. The difference between a push rod motor and a dual lever cam motor. Push rod motor, your camshaft is down in here. You're gonna get a view with that. It lifts up on these lifters right here, they're on the lobe, which then in turn push these push rods up and rotate the rocker, pushing down the springs. A dual of red cam motor though, there's no cam in the center. The cams are above here. This is what most modern cars use. And there's a timing belt that'll run around. And when those spin, they push down the springs directly. Mm -hmm. Pros of having a dual of red cam motor is you get higher, higher rev limiters because you're not pushing, you're just forcing it down. It's a lot easier, a lot freer spinning, not less moving parts. These have a lot more torque. Don't ask me why, I'm not a genius. They have more torque. I think it's, honestly, I think it's due to leverage, but I think that, it is. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not that, a scientist. And, and because well, LS in general have really big valves, because there's only two of them, they have to fit mm -hmm. in the same amount of air to feed a 5.3 liter motor. Yeah. <laughs> this is bromance right here. Dude. Hold it. Come on. No, no, you gotta, you gotta get it from this angle out. No, 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 from the back angle. No, no, no don't, don't look. look. Don't look, dude. Dude, Stop. twist it harder. Twist it. I'm turning it as hard as I can, dog. Come on, it's not enough. Come on. Why is it so hard? Dude, you're asking me. <laughs> okay, it's coming, yeah. I think it's... Oh, oh there's that. We're gonna have to get it. It's like, got two more threads. Ah, I need new friends. I need new friends. All right, so when you're moving ahead, you wanna work from center out with bolts. So you're gonna go middle, one first, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Then this one. is General Motors specific. They always have a top row. These aren't fastened as tight though, but. Yeah, yeah, still you want to work from center out. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then hedge come up. Because that just prevents any warping or any warping. Yeah. Using the breaker bar, just don't break it. Uh, yeah, you got it. Breaker bar for the wind. Yes, yeah. most definitely. For iron bl or for iron heads, would you have to do this exact same thing, or no? Iron wouldn't warp yeah. like aluminum does. You have to do it no matter what the cylinder head. Okay, makes sense. It doesn't matter as much when taking it off, but it's good practice to do it mm -hmm. because then, hey, it's better than getting to machine shop. You need your heads machine. Give us another eighty bucks. Yep.
one common thing to do at machine shops is what's called deburring the block. It's kind of expensive, but it's kind of worth it if you're using the block multiple times for different builds. They take a Dremel, go along the edge here, and ever so slightly bevel it. So when you're handing the block, it doesn't cut your fingers. No oh, different than the other ones. These are 10 mil stuff, not a 15. I got it without it. Quinn's now tackling the top row of bolts. They're not as tight, they're more right. just to balance it out. Then left. You might want to stand on this side, Rob, just so you can catch it if it does fall. Oh, oh you cannot it. reuse these head bolts either, because they're torqued to yield. So once they're torqued, they stretch, you can never reuse them. Well, the ones inside this head, there's both of them, I believe. Or you can just go online. ARP makes an entire fastening set for like yeah. a couple hundred bucks. I mean, might as well re renew the hardware, right? If you're building a high performance engine, ARP. Yeah. Get all their studs, all their bolts. I would say definitely just reuse, or not reuse, get new hardware for most of your yeah. stuff. Might as well. It just prevents good maintenance from any of the old used parts breaking from you further down the road. There's a head boy. Oh, there we go. Boom. Yep. Yep. That is... That's not as heavy as I thought. I mean, it's an aluminum cylinder head, so... Not a lot of coolant fell out, either. Here, that. All right, let's check this bad boy out. I think the fish smell's coming from there, dude. <laughs> I think it is. Hey, hey, This is freaking nice. There's no blow-by. This motor has no damage so far on this bank. Nice. This head gasket was... looks like it was done. Robbie, when do you think this was changed? Recently. Very that recently. That looks new. It looks brand new. There's no burn mark or anything. Look at that. And the cylinder walls feel a little bit. these cylinders. There's no carbon bubble. Or next to none. Wow. That is freaking nice. Honestly, we probably didn't even need to tear down the motor. It could have just ran on its own. Yeah. I don't know. Build it. Dude. Ooh. This one has a little scoring in there, a little bit. Probably can get that rehoned. Little lip. A lot of gunk, dude. Yeah, it's got a little gunk fella, not the biggest deal. But this, this bank looks like... Ready for the bolts. But this, the sides are... Oh, 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 here, it oh is. here it is. That's why. Holy cow, dude, that's destroyed. On top of that... It's like is... something fell in there. Yeah. The, there's a little scratch right there. Oof. But, oh, some scratching up here. Yeah, that's why I was like wondering... It can get it's not the biggest deal. That, oh, I don't know if you guys can see that, that, but that piston head... Is yeah. absolutely destroyed. Something fell in there. Okay. But look, there's the valves are seating properly. Compared to all the others, there's no nicks or crannies in here. Wait, what does the head gasket like on the other bank? It was fine. I was that it. Is it new? Like the blue? Yeah, it like the other one? I mean, I think it was running fine. What I'm, this one I'm thinking. Blowing it a valve, doing something. Mart up that. The cylinder walls was fine enough to continue running, so they just slapped new head gaskets on it, put new valves in it, and ran it. Because look, these two exhaust valves look cleaner than these two. Yeah. I don't That's, know. I, I can see, yeah. So, we'll see. Hey, but that cylinder head is absolutely destroyed. Yeah, it's pretty gnarled up. I would not want to run that. No. <laughs> All right, so we just finished up uh, taking all the exterior pieces off. So now we're gonna get into um, the actual block itself and tearing that down. So video to come. Yes, sir. Let's get it. <laughs> 